Why do Asians like living in the city more than everyone else? Yeah, we got to talk about it because a brand new Pew Research study just came out, Andrew, that said Asian Americans, more than white Americans, more than black Americans, more than Latino Americans, like living in dense, walkable cities where their amenities are an arm's reach away versus rural life or, of course, dispersed suburban life. Yeah, it's a little odd because uh, a lot of the best cars come from Asia, but then Asians don't like to drive. Either way, we did a whole bunch of research, and we're about to give you the reason why that is right here in this video guys if you're excited about this please hit that like button right now check out other episodes of the hot pot boys because you know frivolous to serious we talking about it all yeah let's just get into some history real quick andrew we got to talk about the yushi circle the what so yushi is a city in yunnan province in china if you draw a 4,000 kilometer perimeter radius from yushi andrew that is 54 percent of the world's population that's 4.27 billion people you do the same thing with paris and mexico andrew it's like one point one nine billion and zero point seven three billion long story short andrew asia is incredibly populated it is actually the most populated place on earth you see got a lot of people man that's crazy but anyways guys let's get into the reactions and a lot of the explanations yeah so it's gonna take us through a whole arc of like how these like ethnic enclaves started in the city did they move out of the enclave are they in ethno burbs now but anyway real quick andrew somebody said having lived in both america and vietnam i prefer just being able to walk outside and go to the market i really do not miss having to drive a few miles to the store having to pay for my car my car insurance car washes car maintenance all that stuff plus not only that i feel like walkable communities have equal um b better lives and just a better sense of community and just a better quality of life yeah this guy's saying like you know you save money and it is true however it can it can it get kind of hard when when the weather's bad like when it snows in new york it, it is hard to walk but ultimately you have no choice and sometimes walking it is even easier than driving in the snow yeah, that's right. a good point. Andrew, moving on, somebody said, you know, I think Americans really, really love that, like, castle frontier mentality. Mm. It sort of comes from Manifest Destiny. It comes from this and that and the new world. The country's very new, obviously, once it got, like, taken over by Europeans from the Native Americans. Um, so, basically, people said they just have a castle frontier mentality that maybe was over in Europe, like, a thousand years ago. No, and what they're referring to is because on this graph that the white Americans, they actually have the numbers flipped than the Asians. So really the Asians and the whites are on the opposite ends of this survey where basically white people love their frontier. I love building my own castle, having my own yard. And boy, if you, you tell about Andrew, you tell my little house on the prairie. Boy, boy, I'm telling you, man, if you step on my big five acre yard. Yeah. And by the way, out. guys, uh, I, I, before people think we're being too critical, I think there's pros and cons to like oh. both lifestyles. Oh, by the way, I know Asian families who like big yards and like to live in the woods and stuff like that. However, I will say what I know about those families, they also come from the rural areas of Asia. So that's what they're right. used to. Right. Um, for example, our family typically comes from like very, very big, dense cities. Maybe that's what has contributed to us being comfortable in very big, dense, packed cities. Awesome. Um, another thing was someone said, you know, just in, in China, the after you eat dinner and just in Asia in general, in India, after eating dinner, a lot of people just like to walk around. They don't have a car, so they're going to take public transportation or literally just walk on the street. That's true. American car culture is very, very developed. You have to understand this and the whole like roads and infrastructures and highways, like this type of thing was like, I want to say invented in America because they had cars first and trucks first, like big trucks first. And so, you know, even in Asia, when they do have cars, oftentimes in China, the cars are pretty much the same size, but in places like Japan, the cars are small. Korea, the cars are possibly a little bit smaller, you know? Yeah. You know, some people said that it's very different because in Asia, sometimes the cities are safer than the countryside, whereas in America, there is an overarching narrative that the cities are much more dangerous than the countryside. Mm. So it's almost like that the inner city or the cities in general are like filled with ghettos. That's a very um, American way of thinking. Right. And um, it is true, Andrew, that when ethnic enclaves first were created in America, they were in cities because at one point, like only cities existed, whether you're talking about like San Francisco or places like New York. Yeah, I mean, if you look at society, they're built from the city, usually the coastline first, they build up the city, then there's like the suburban sprawls, you know, then you get houses and farms and, and then things kind of fill up in the middle. So at a time, the inner city was the cheapest place for immigrants to move to, actually. It wasn't like expensive downtown prices. It was like the ghettos. That's where all the immigrants moved to. That's why Chinatowns, which are hubs of all types of Asians, but you, mostly Chinese, 
they started in the city. K-Town started often in the cities. Uh, even a little Saigon's, they either started in adjacency to Chinatowns or in other like urban yeah, areas. Yeah, so a lot of people were just talking about a general developmental curve, right? For example, even of a lot of Italians, Andrew, they still live in places like New Jersey or things that are like close to originally where a lot of Italians landed in America. Of course, huge Sicilian influx into New York City. I mean, do you think, Andrew, that is what is contributing, obviously, to the gigantic ethno burbs that are Asian, that are both on the West Coast and East Coast, even places like Arizona and Houston, that are close to the downtown of a city, but they're almost like Asian neighborhoods, maybe just like 20, 30, 40 minutes away? Yeah, no, I mean, I think that there are tons, guys, even around cities that you wouldn't usually expect. I know that there's big Asian supermarkets being built in Boston, the Boston area. So, obviously, anytime there's a big Asian supermarket, you know that there's like a certain amount of Asians there. Oh, Andrew, we used to live in an ethno burb, the 626, specifically Alhambra, yeah. which really actually, it, I want to say for sure it's a suburb, but it does not feel like the suburb we grew up in. It is actually very, very, very dense. Yeah, I mean, LA, the whole LA County is not really urban. It's like suburban urban. It's kind of like a suburban sprawl. That's what they call it. But it's a very, a lot of busy suburbs. But once you get out to Diamond Bar, I feel like it starts to feel like this. Andrew, somebody also said, you know, my guess is a lot of the AAPI community is just relatively new and they just don't have the system set up to even make sense of going to the countryside. So they would rather just like stay around each other in dense communities, sort of just to like have some sense of like self and, and just like uh, humanity. Yeah, and this person actually compared it to, it's similar to orientation week when you're a freshman in college. The other races have longer histories in the US and that might already feel home like to them, like the upperclassmen. But since you're new, you just stay around your dorm. Yeah, I think that there, uh, this is not like 100 out of 100 true, but like Andrew, there's a lot to be said for growth developmental curves, yeah. right? What stage are people in? Are they still a partying like a freshman? Are they still in their sophomore, junior yeah. year? Or are they like that jaded senior that just can't be bothered to show up for anything? And just because it's said that Asians prefer to not drive as much doesn't mean that they don't drive. I know a lot of Asian parents that like to drive, but just not very far. So if you live in the suburbs, you want to live within like a couple miles of an Asian market. That's basically ideal and yes i do think that um you know a lot of time it's just like i think a lot of asians will look at the rural societies in america and be like uh, maybe they're not gonna be friendly to me or maybe there's not really that much out there for me so why would i move to rural oklahoma i would say that i agree for the vast majority of asians when they see rural oklahoma they don't really see anything that they feel attracted to however a few families may see an opportunity to open up the only asian fusion donut sushi all everything all and, at once store and that's where the movie minari comes into play so shout out to steven yoon and his performance in minari it was beautiful so anyway guys we did not get to cover every single comment but we're going to get into our takeaways andrew i will say this it really depends on where your parents are from. Mm. If your parents are from rural Asia, if your parents are from semi-rural Asia, or your parents are from like the big main mega city in whatever country they come from. Yeah, and I think a lot of Asians that first came over here, uh, not all, but a lot of them probably did come from the bigger cities. Japanese, probably a lot of them came from like Tokyo, not all. Uh, a lot of uh, Chinese did come from Shanghai or Guangzhou or Hong Kong, right? Or even Beijing, right? So if you're from those bigger cities, you might, just prefer the bigger cities. It's very common. Dude, most Koreans are like from Seoul or or Busan, like two, like three or four cities, right? right? So it's like, these are cities. Yeah. I think, yeah, South Koreans are very much uh, adapted to city life. However, some people do when they come to America and they find all the space, they end up liking it. Mm -hmm. Moving on to number two, Andrew, if you really enjoy shooting guns, driving trucks, outdoorsy things, 90% of the time, you have to be close to the countryside to indulge in those things, or at least be in the uh, type of suburb that's like, 40 minutes to an hour out. Yeah, I mean, if you drive a big truck, you can't really do that in the city or there's no point, you know, unless you are hauling stuff and you work in construction or something like that. Also, those are just not typical Asian interests. Obviously, we all know Asians that are into that kind of stuff. I, I might be like 5% into this stuff, but like, it's not enough for me to change my life and want to go out to the wide open area so I can fire my guns and go shoot cans like bing, right. bing, bing in my backyard. Point number three, Andrew, what do you think is the significance of the Yushi circle being just like the most populated place on earth by far? Is it just that Asians are all so compact and we're not too aggressive and, you know, we're not like the biggest, tallest people and we don't have the biggest muscles and that's why we're able to, to pack into that tiny little zone together? Bro, you know what's crazy is I think if you put a dot into 
La Abra, California, and you made that a circle of like 40 miles, you probably encompass all of the Asians in LA. So I just think maybe Los Angeles County, LA and OC is just remaking the Yushi circle. That's wow. how many Asians there are in that 50 mile range. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I don't know. I might put the dot. Yeah, no. Yeah, Fullerton, something like that. Yeah, Fullerton. See. Why not? Uh, moving on to number four, Andrew. This sort of like packed, dense culture, does it require a certain level of peace or docility to run this type of system? Because like we saw, obviously during Asian hate or during things like that, like some of the Asian elders that were from Asia, whether they were on the West Coast or East Coast, they were kind of just walking around and then they... It's not blaming them at all, but they got subject to a lot of violence while they were just literally going for a walk after lunch or dinner. Yeah, I mean, I've even heard some terrible stories of non-elders, you know, just like Asians our age that also uh, got into some trouble by just walking around. But I think the truth is Asian society in Asia is just not as violent. It's not it's as really not. It's man. not as it's not as random. It, it does attacks. have its bad stories too, but I just think on a percentage basis, it's not even close. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about violent crimes. It's just not as violent, and America is a much more violent country for a number of factors. So I think that yes, living densely in those areas together, it's even more appealing because ultimately, you know, when people like imagine these utopian futuristic dense societies when people are stacked on top of each other or like that one walled city that they're like trying to build in, in Saudi Dubai, Arabia. Right, or right, Dubai, the, whatever. the line. Yeah, like that can't have any crime or else instead of that city, that beautiful utopia, it turns into- Gotham City, The right? walled city of Hong Kong of Kowloon. Oh, <laughs> you right, know what right. I mean? Right, it's where it's kind of like lawless and basically that's not, that's not gonna be comfortable for people. So I guess there is kind of- this assumption like, yes, you can live in massively huge, huge 30 million people cities around each other, but people kind of have to buy into treating each other with some level of respect or at right. least not wanting to hurt each so other. So I guess now that we've seen the stats, Andrew, Asia's the most packed and people take that sort of compact mentality over here. Europe is more dense than North America, but still not that dense. And of course, North America is very not dense. Where do we see the trends? Do we see Asians adopting to sort of like the castle frontier mentality? Or is America going to need to move more towards the mega city Asia approach? You, you want to know my answer? The truth is, I think most Asians, and this counts even for Asians who are from the city or the rural areas originally in Asia, they're just going to value opportunities over everything. So if there's opportunities in the suburbs, Asians will go there. If there's opportunities in the countryside, some Asians go there, right? They open up the one Chinese restaurant, that right. one random uh, Japanese but buffet that serves everything. But I would guess in modern society and moving forward, the city is going to have more opportunities than yeah, the rules generally, even but, than more than the past. And I think that's why Asians move to the city at the first, right? They stop in the city, get to know everybody, uh, make all the connections. Hey, where do I go? Where do I go? Boom, 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 boom. Set your life up. Okay, now I'm going to start a restaurant in Long Island, right? So I guess uh, basically the cities are a good place to start. And I do think this survey was done of all... Uh, all the Asians spoke English, so that leads people to believe it's Asian Americans. Possibly skewed, right? Uh, possibly less immigranty and more like Asian professionals. So of course, Asian professionals, we all like young Asians like love living in the city. Like they, I don't know, they just love it for some reason. I, I think it's the food, the lifestyle, everything that we listed here as well. So yummy things. Yeah, but I do think elderly Asians like walking communities too. But it doesn't have to be a city. I think they just like walking communities. So anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Um, I guess anecdotally, before the study came out, I would have said that this was true, but obviously the scientific Pew research is right there. I, I'm a little surprised at how much the numbers are with the Asians. Like, how much more the Asians like it than everybody else. Look at this graph. Anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you think. Are you Asian? Do you like living in more of a walking style community? It doesn't have to be this big city, but a walking community. Or do you like to hop in your Ford F, and, you know, just with the window down and just woo, ride down the highway with no speed limit. Let us know in the comment section below. Silly to serious hot pot boys. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.